Hey guys, welcome back to the Beatles Shelf. Um, we have some really cool stuff to show off today. Um, so let's get started. This has been um, a long time in the making actually. Um, one of my dream Beatles to rear has been Goliathus Goliathus, um, the big Goliath beetle. And I was finally able to acquire some larvae from a breeder uh, within the United States. So I have um, two first instar um, larvae that we're going to be adding or ch changing our substrate and putting it into a new rearing container and then kind of describing my process for rearing them because they're very different than most other scarab species for rearing. Um, so first uh, I want to kind of talk about how this goliath beetle is different. So first off after a week or two in the, in the L1 stage they um, no longer eat the inner uh, the organic substrate material. They don't feast on substrate at all. They eat almost a strictly strictly a protein diet. Um, so breeders have used different kinds of dog food, orchamaris, which is like a dried shrimp. Um, I use koi food because it's very high in protein, very low in fat um, to feed the, the larva. And I feed every two days and it's actually, you actually just place a small piece of food on top of the substrate and they'll come up, grab it, and bring it back down into their burrow. Um, so they're very different than most other species. And they're very hard to rear in captivity usually, or they have been because the knowledge about them has been very slim. Uh, but recently, Jonathan Lai um, and Orrin McMonagall, amongst others, has kind of pioneered and figured out a lot of the secrets to rearing this beetle. Uh, and we'll discuss those as we go through this series. Um, so, yes, along with them being rare and difficult to breed, they're very expensive. So I was only able to get two for right now, but hopefully we can uh, expand the project and the culture uh, as we go on. So this is my first time doing it, and I'm just going to be basing my rearing methods off of articles published by um, Orrin McMonagall, um, Carl Meyer, some video logs by Daniel Ambuel, and also um, articles by Jonathan Lai, all on Goliathus Goliathus. So, yep, uh, let's get started. So first, they need a very, a very specific temperature, um, 22 degrees to 24 degrees, 25 degrees Celsius is best in that range. So I have mine sitting at 24, 25 degrees Celsius. It's in a styrofoam box, so we'll look at it right here. I have other, I have Madagascar hissing cockroaches in here too, so they're right here. And I keep the larva down here in this little area where I pop the little containers in. This is a temperature sensor that's hooked up to a, um, it's called a rheostat. It monitors and regulates the temperature based on a heat map. So this is a, um, I think it's a 12 watt heat mat um, that will heat up. And then the rheostat measuring the temperature says, okay, if it's too cold, we'll heat it up. When it gets to that temperature, we turn the heat pad off. Uh, and it just kind of goes to that cycle and it maintains a really even 24 25 degrees Celsius um, So I highly recommend this setup. This is just a styrofoam bin uh, that I have a lid on uh, and it keeps a, a very constant temperature uh, in there So uh, yeah, highly recommend doing this the heat mat was about $17 the rheostat if you get a nicer one is about $35 $40 um, it's about 50 or so for the setup um, but it's pretty necessary if you want to rear Goliathus. Um, if you like your home cooler, around 72 degrees Celsius, you're going to need a little bit higher temperature for Goliathus to grow uh, properly. So, yep, that's the setup. Now we'll go into looking at um, the substrate I'm using for them, and then we'll replace the substrate, feed them, and call it good for today. So let me just my, adjust my camera here. Bring it back over. Um, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing with my hands. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, great. Awesome. So, um, the larvae grow very fast, but you don't need a very big container. This is what they're in right now. Uh, small deli cups. They are two ounce deli cups, and that works fine for them. Um, and, but mine are growing very quickly. They doubled size in just a day. Uh, 
which is pretty crazy. Um, in L1, they grow they grow very fast, but um, these things in the third instar can gain a gram or two a day. Um, so very quick, quick growing um, species. I'm going to use these containers. Um, these are 5.5 ounce. I'll probably fill it halfway up with substrate so it's the same size as the containers over there, maybe a little bit deeper. Um, and this will be their container from here up until maybe mid or late L2. So it's a small container, but the reason we do that is so that they can find their feed very easily because they hunt. So you put the feed on top of the substrate and they have to find it. Uh, so we want a smaller container so they can find their feet easier. And contrary to other species where a small space will stress them out because they can find their food very easily, uh, it's, it doesn't stress them out when they have a small container. So, okay, we're going to use um, two kinds of substrate to mix in. This is one that I made. It's rotten wood and compost with some leaves in there. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this because um, there's still L1 and in the L1 instar, the, in the first instar they still eat a tiny bit of plant material. So it's safe to have some of that in there. So we'll have this mix. I'll kind of take some of the finer parts of it and just put maybe a third of that, have, have a third of the volume be that, and a third of it be, um, this is like peat moss, but it's actually the coconut coir. Um, this is eco earth that I, um, I hydrated and then I froze for a, a few days. And I froze just to really sterilize it. I froze this as well and I froze my rearing containers for a few days just to make sure that no, no mites or uh, any other kind of pest would infest uh, the rearing container. And that's important because, because you're feeding protein, mycelium and uh, grain mites and things can swell very easily because um, you have a, a real food source in there. So we're just gonna take um, a little bit of the finer parts of this material. Um, pop it in our container. Again, not too much, just enough so that if they want to eat a little bit, uh, they can. Um, a good indicator of when you can really stop giving them this organic substrate is uh, when they consistently are eating the, the, the pellets, the food pellets off the top of the substrate. Um, both of mine already have taken their pellets down into their burrows. So I'm very confident that I don't need to have too much of this in there, um, but we'll have a little bit. We'll change it out in 10 days anyway to keep things clean. So um, after that point, oops, after that point, we'll just use uh, the coconut coir. So. And again, this isn't for them to eat, it's just for them to um, to live in. And I choose coconut core because it's cheap and it also holds moisture pretty well. It doesn't need to be super um, damp because like I said, it holds the moisture so well, especially when you're using a container like mine with the styrofoam setup, um, it's pretty hard for the humidity to escape. So just gonna mix that a little bit. It doesn't need to be compacted. Just trying to feel for um, dampness. Um, with Goliathus, because you use protein food, it's always a little bit safer to um, go drier than damper because if it's too damp, mycelium will take over. So that looks about good. Not super uh, filled, but maybe a bit less than halfway full. Um, and I'll fill it up a little bit more as they uh, grow, but this will be the same size container for them. So get that, let's get out our first larva. This is larva number one. I have them labeled because I track their eating and their growth. We're going to see if um, if she's eaten it all um, and we'll look for our protein pellet in there. Oh, there's a larva. See, this is crazy because I got these as hatchlings yesterday and they're already bigger than my two week old Lucanus Mazama. So uh, really impressive growth on them. Once they get bigger, uh, I'll start weighing them. This might be big enough to weigh right now. Um, 
I'll weigh them after a week. I don't want to disturb them too much right now. So this is the Goliathus Goliathus. It's so tiny right now, but they, these things can get uh, four, five, six inches long when they're um, third in star. So they're a pretty impressive species. So we'll pop them in there. Uh, he'll start to burrow down. Now let's check through our substrate to see if the protein pellet was completely eaten. Yep, see, so I don't see any any fish food pellets. It kind of looks like a kibble dog food. Um, but I don't see anything there, so it ate it completely. So this time we'll put two pellets in. Um, since it's eaten, all the food I put in last time, we'll um, put in two pellets. Um, the pellets are relatively small, um, but I'll just keep increasing the feed as um, I go. I've heard some people soak these um, before to get them damp I, uh, and soft because they eat soft food better than dry. So I'm just gonna kinda let them soak up some water there a little bit uh, and place some, oops, let's place some more toward the center. So it's easier for him to find. Get a new one. Um, and then I guess depending on your method, you can uh, you can soak them a little bit, or you can just um, do a little spritz on top. So nice. Um, again, not too much water. If I start to see a lot of mycelium, then I won't put as much water, but you can see it's already burrowed down, um, but it'll come back up and grab the food uh, as time goes. So, okay, that's our first one. This is a new lid, so we're going to grab our pen, and this was number one. So we're gonna mark number one right here. Um, and then, I'm gonna mark that I put, that I found, or that I put two pellets in. So this is larva number one, plus two. And I didn't find any uh, pellets in there. Uh, so I'm not gonna write anything else. Had I found a pellet, I would have put minus one. I took one pellet out. Um, they usually don't eat pellets that have been sitting there for, after, for more than two days. So that's uh, so why we take them out if they're still uh, present. Um, so. I'll put this in my Excel sheet later. I uh, always have it marked there. Put a spot for two, and let's do number two as well. Um, get some of our leaf matter. And again, I would not use this uh, if you haven't frozen it yet. So, okay, that's plenty of that. And some coconut coir. They do well in small, uh, small spaces, so you don't have to put too much in. But again, the coconut coir holds the moisture really nicely. So that's how we use it. This one, if I remember, was a little bit smaller, so we might put. A little bit less coir in. Doesn't need to be too damp because it holds whatever moisture is in there really well. Um, so, okay. Awesome. So that's our container there. Let's get our second. I think there's a food pellet still left in this one, so we'll check as we go. I think that's the pellet. There's the pellet right there. So see the pellet wasn't really eaten. Um, and it's kind of got some mycelium on it. So um, we'll just put one pebble, one piece of food, one pellet in today. 
and then maybe in two days, if it eats more, then we'll put more in. So this is really impressive. This was a very, very fresh hatchling yesterday, or two days ago maybe. Um, but now it's, again, just as big as my two week old Lacanus Mizama. So um, they grow very fast. So we'll put him down there, grab one pellet, soak it a little bit in our hand, uh, and then pop it on top. So. Awesome. I think we'll be good. We'll be good there. We'll put them back in our container. It's mark number two. And then we go with our bookkeeping. My pen go. So number two, we had plus one, minus one. So we took one out, so awesome. Um, and then, yeah, they actively search and hunt for food, so they should find the pellets. Uh, if they don't, then um, we'll put it closer to the burrow or make it, maybe make it a smaller container, but they should, they should do just fine. Um, so yeah, we'll... Um, I'll update you uh, as time goes on um, and as we change substrate and stuff. Um, yeah, keep tuning in. Excited to see how these guys grow. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I've researched these guys a lot. This is my first time doing it, so I'm still pretty inexperienced, but my knowledge base uh, is pretty wide. So let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, thanks for watching.